God has given us a beautiful word. How uh, just close our eyes and just talk. Father, we come for you this morning, Lord. Help us to hear your voice, Father. Help us to hear what you're saying, Lord. Lord, just open our understanding, the heights of understanding this morning, that we'll see things in the Spirit, Father. Just come with this word that you're giving me, Lord. Lord, let your high being, Father, reveal your word to your people. Father, we just pray this morning that you will give us concentration that as we look into your word. That's us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We're going to read a few scattered verses this morning. And then I'll give you the caption of the message, which will be a series or a study into the subject. I don't know why I end up with a series, but God is going to be a series. It's going to be a, I believe the Lord's really going to open our understanding in a couple of weeks more. I was really asking God, struggling with it for a few weeks, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Back and forth, back and forth, and Lord just remain silent and just hello. This, this subject will be in my heart. I don't know why, but and how a blessing. I'm angry this for the first time again. It's going to be a really challenge to me as well. So yes, we're going to read a scattered verse this morning, a few scattered verses. The first one would be Exodus 15, verse 11. Exodus 15, verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Question mark. Who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. You got that? First one, 15, 11. Second one is Psalms 71, verse 19. Psalms 71. 71.19 71, 19. 71 19 goes like this Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high Who has done great things, O God, who is like unto thee? Is that that? Turn again next to Psalms 86. 86, 8. Got it? Psalms 86, 8. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Next page, Psalms 89, 8. 89.8 Got it? O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? Question mark. Or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Question mark. And the last one is Psalms 113 <coughs> verse 5. 113 verse 5. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high? Got those verses? Although they do not test up. I didn't see it. Can you put the full verse in there? Do you have it to work on it? Oh, okay, it's all right. You got all those verses? Exodus 15 11. Psalms 71, 19, Psalms 86, 8, Psalms 89, 8, 
Psalms 135. These are the few ones in have seen, but there are many. Now, when we look at these couple of verses here, yeah, we just now read. Can you see this one thing that come across? One thing in common that these authors, or authors are marveled. What is that? Precisely. One thing that these authors marvel is who is like God? <coughs> Amen? Mm. Who is like God? <coughs> Imagine these are holy men. But they marvel is one thing that comes true. Some of them had a question. Yeah, we've seen in Exodus. Some had a question. Some a strong expression. Mm. Yet some an astonishment in the minds of the writers. They're astonished. We are going to talk about the attributes of God. <clears throat> the attributes of God. <clears throat> that will be a title or a caption of a message. And I said, it's huge. <laughs> it's really huge. It's inexhaustible. I mean, what kind of finite, finite like me understand in finite. <coughs> but <coughs> it's huge, you know. It's uh, theologians, scholars, Bible scholars, Bible authors are, are, are pondered and pondered from all from the scripture. They, you have 25, 35 attributes. Um, but I was just waiting and studying with the Lord and um, I've just got 14 <coughs> attributes. It's the same thing, cut in different slices, like, you know, the many ways you can slice up pie. So we put it in our terms. Many ways you can slice a cake. But it's all there. <coughs> so I've taken the 14 attributes of God. What is an attribute? Do you want to? I like to learn your Character of God. When you say an attribute, general word, yeah? Then we go into the attribute. Part of God. What is the word attribute? When you when you hear the word attribute in the dictionary or anywhere in English, what is an attribute? Feature. Feature? Any, any? Characteristic. Characteristic? Yes? Anything else? Nature. Nature? Yes. Yes? I've just got one dictionary definition of an attribute. An attribute is a quality or a feature regarded as a characteristic or an inherent part of someone or something. Is that clear? An attribute this is a general attribute, the word by itself. A quality or a feature regarded as a characteristic or inherent part of someone or something. Is that clear? Let's establish that definition first. So when we say the attributes of God, we refer to the qualities that belong to the being of God. School, that's why I'm trying to go very slow because it's really a weighty one, but I feel so important for we as followers of Christ to, to really understand. And I tell you why it's so important. As the quality is a feature regarded as characteristic or inherent part of someone. And when we say the attributes of God, we refer to the qualities that belong to the being of God. Okay, brother? We are in some technical difficulties. Eh? <laughs> so that's an attribute of God. As I said, it's a huge subject, an inexhaustible one to comprehend. And we will never, hear me, we will never be able to plumb the depths, nor to ascend, or to ascend to the heights of this attributes of God. It's huge, it's really huge. Yeah. <laughs> but it's important we as a church to literally comprehend as much as we can. And I said, 
We are finite. You know what's finite? Yeah. Limited. Limited. How can the finite comprehend completely the infinite? Thank God for Jesus Christ and the written word, the inspired word of God, the Holy Spirit of God. He has given us as much as we can comprehend. Mm. Wasn't for this word, mm. we're not comprehending many things. Amen. Thank God for this word. <coughs> Men and women actually fought with their lives and died to bring this word to us. So thank God for the word. We will comprehend as much as what is written here. And when we get to heaven, we will understand the entire more, and that will take eternity for us to understand. Mm. <laughs> That's why, so what we need to know now for our lives, how to conduct our lives, how to live this life godly, the godly life is given us, God has given in his word, the attributes. That's not accessible, that's, that's just, when we get to heaven, <coughs> Well, every day we will be seeing the attributes of God. And that's why the angels look at yeah. the face of God and saying, Holy, holy, holy. It's not, um, no, holy, holy, no. Mm -hmm. Because whenever they're seeing it, they're saying, No, 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 I didn't see this. What is this about God? What's, they are eternally, even now, looking at the new attributes of God. Look at that. Can you fathom that? That is God Himself. Yeah. That God came down as man. Yeah. You, first of all, you can't comprehend Creator becoming creation. Yeah. Can you comprehend that? Oh, we can't, isn't it? I might, I might be a carpenter. I might make a, a table. Imagine me becoming a table, yeah. so that I can talk to other tables. This is this is this is something that goes beyond. We, we make something, we also a little bit, we, well, we procreate. <laughs> little bit creator and procreator. But imagine, we can't have the ability. But God came down in his own creation as man, to redeem man. That's, that's the component. That's what we understand. So, <clears throat> we're going to look at a few attributes this morning. And I'm going to go very slow. And what I'm going to do today is just give you a little bit of it, we'll come back a few weeks as we go now and look at it because I need to get revelation as well from God. So I'm just going to get little, little, little now to ingest, to digest. Think about it, go home, reflect on it. We'll come back next week and we'll go take it little by little. Is that okay? Yeah. <coughs> so what I'm going to say, I'm going to skim the surface as you like or scratch the surface from this wealth of that of God. Now before we, we do this, we need to know, as I said, why we need to know that of God. Why we need to understand who God is. Because that is is what, what He is. We see that in a matter of time. Why do we need to understand who God is? When I was re reflecting on the reasons, I said, well, just why, why? Is it important? Is it uh, important for a child of God, for a follower of Jesus Christ to understand this? And I was reflecting and asking God the reasons. So this gave me a few. First of all, one number one, our knowledge about God, hear me, determines our ways in life. Mm. You got it. Our knowledge of about God determines our ways in life. You got that? Yes. Second one, our understanding of God shapens our views on things of God. Yes. How much we understand God, that will shape our views on all the things of God. Yes. We don't understand the Creator, we can't understand the creation of the of <coughs> can understand other men, other women. So it's really important to have an understanding of God. Thank God for the Bible. The third one, as one theologian, theologian put in this way, he said, this is very, I found this very heating on my, my spirit. He says, you tell me, you tell me what you believe about God, 
and I will tell you the rest about your life. <laughs> just, just hit me on my face. He said, you tell me what you believe about God and I will tell you the rest about your life. That's so important in this day at Luz of God. A.W. Toso said once, whatever comes into your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. Mm. So you read that book? Whatever comes into your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. Are you getting it? Are you, you alright? Are you getting it? The next one. Wrong doctrines creep into people's mind because of the incorrect knowledge of God. Mm. <coughs> Wrong doctrines about God are creeps into the people's minds. And Paul tells us we also have doctrines of the devil. <laughs> we have doctrines of men. We also have doctrines of the devil. Trying to creep into, into the minds of people. And that's because of the incorrect knowledge of God in the revealed world. See, we, the next one. We cannot be wrong about God and right elsewhere. We must be right about God. When we understand the next one, then when we understand God, we bring our lives near me. Well, this is a very important thing. When we understand God, we bring our lives aligning to God. And not bringing God aligning to our lives. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? When we understand God, we, when we understand who He is, whose attribute and what is He, we, we bring our lives all that we know, all that we like, all that we live, how we want to live and all you want to think and all you want to believe. We bring our lives aligning to God. Not bringing God aligning to our lives. That shows an incorrect knowledge of God. Because when you understand and comprehend the, who He is and His nature and His character, you will literally bring your lives aligning to Him. Not the other way around. A Christian's life or a follower of Jesus, a follower's life is defined by the proper understanding of the knowledge of God. To know God, you first have to know about Him. And I mean not in a peripheral way, I mean who is He completely. A Christian's life is defined by the proper understanding, I use every word so important, I'm waiting on the Lord. Proper understanding of the knowledge of God. So in our series, our studies, we will be looking at at least 14 attributes of God. That's broad actually. And if, you, if you just go into and look at this, uh, this wealth, you'll find 25, 26, 46. It goes on, you know, you look at, so what well, I'm still struggling to because, because such a strong, but the Lord just, you know, just told me these ones you take and then broadly, um, God can give me the revelation of it. So there are 14 attributes of God. Now, I have been inspired to see God's attributes can be divided into two categories. I just felt it so strongly that that's how, you know, again, I said it's my way of cutting the pie. But the pie is pie. Anyway, you slice it, you still have to pie. God's attributes can be divided into two categories. First one I call it in or intrinsic attributes. See, you know I don't pronounce it properly. So you, I'm not good in words. I'm just good at what God gives me. I'm trying to fit for that. 
Are you teachers over here? How do you pronounce your sister? Intrinsic. Intrinsic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. Intrinsic. And the second one is? Demonstrative. Demonstrative attribute. So I the Lord just showed me this two broadly classified. One is intrinsic, and the second is demonstrative or demonstrative attribute. Let's look first. What does anyone can share here? What do we mean by intrinsic? Within. Yeah. Within? Innate? Part of? The word intrinsic means something that is in you, right? That's what makes you. You can't take that out of you. So, intrinsic attributes are the very nature, as brother said, nature of God. The very nature of God, that who God means who God is, is the very nature of God, that who God is. And then you have the next one, demonstrative attributes. They are the very character of God. What God does, how God acts, interacts, and responds is the demonstrative attribute. Is that clear from you? Any of those difference between nature and character? Are they the same? No. What is the difference between these two? What is the nature and what is the character? Personality? Now to bring it because I have kind of Sorry? Kind of person, nature. Kind of person? It's nature. Use personality. Personality? personality? The genetic get up. Sorry. That's the nature talking about. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. the genetic get. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? <coughs> Hinbuilt? Character? Character? Is nature. Character. Creation. That's what it is. Nature is what you've been created. You create something. And character? Is what you develop. What you develop. What you make of yourself. What you... So is that different from nature? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Totally. So it's important to understand it's so important these two things, yeah? I uh, just got that... Um, not bad. I got it in because it's not going to speak that, but um, I think it's very strong to do. To just give you a half shot of what is nature and character. So nature, who you, nature is who you are. Yeah. Remember what I was preparing. Nature is who you are. Character is what you do. Yeah. 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 That's right, it's yeah. Nature is what a person is. Character is what a person does. Nature is what you are. Character is why, yeah, what you do or why you act. Why do you act? That's character, what do you do? Like, there's a whole saying, what do you do is because of who you are. This whole area of essence and existence, I'm not familiar with that debate. What is essence and what is existence? This is going into the philosophy, you know. Uh, I used to read a lot of philosophy, a lot of uh, what is nature? What is essence and what is existence? <laughs> essence is who you are. Yeah? Existence is, existence is what you are, what you what you are. Now, in the secular world, they believe existence precedes essence. 
So you're getting me? Existence precedes essence, meaning what you do will ultimately say who you are. That's not the scripture, that's not the, the teachings of the Lord. That's not what the Christian. Christian teachings is who you are should always determine what you do. Amen. Essence must always precede existence. Mm. See, you see the here we go parallel straight away <coughs> from the secular and the Christian. Parallel, we run parallel. Secular will tell you, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, that's where people recognize you, that's what you are. This is, this is important, you have to have that, that's when you can be recognized, you have to have that. That's secular. He says, no, 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 no. <coughs> Who are you first? You are a child of God. Amen. Who are you? Reen, Reen. Who are you? You are my daughter and my son. Who are you? Then you understand what you do. Amen. Essence always precedes existence to a Christian. This is the this is the fundamental difference between a world and us. Remember that. When you're coming close to it, just ask yourself something there's something wrong here. Because this both will always run parallel. The world and you. Why? Because the world below the world philosophy is what you do should show you who you are. But in Christ is what you are first. Should show what you do. Is that clear? I'm confusing or very clear? Essence must always precede existence, not the other way around. Who you are first. Why do we do certain things? Because for who you are. Why do I don't watch certain, certain movies? Why do I don't, uh, you know, become friends with certain people? Because of who I am. Nothing wrong, brother. Come on, brother. Friday night. Let's go, let's go to hen's party. Buck's party. <laughs> That's struggled, actually. Working here for 12, 12, 14 years as a young boy, I got married. Who I am first should always determine what I do. Yeah. 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 When you confuse that, you're in trouble. Because you, you no longer know who you are, right? <laughs> and that's why the people don't know who I don't know what I am. I'm first I'm heterosexual, then I'm homosexual, and then I'm bisexual. <laughs> we have people after history in the field, started as hetero, then you became homo. How could that be? Because that's what the philosophy is. What you do should actually show who you are. But that's not what Christ teaches us. <clears throat> Christ teaches us that who we are should determine what we do. Because you're in Christ, you have to know what to do. Yes. You, because of your Christ, you don't go to certain places. You don't watch certain movies. You don't uh, speak and assist with certain people. Why? Because I'm the temple of God. Hallelujah. Mm. I move in the presence. Mm. I have a different spirit. Mm. I conduct myself as he conducts me to me. Mm. I know who I am. This is a conscious thing. This is not a conscious thing. At times you will be at times you have to remind yourself who you are. Every time is a struggle. Mm -hmm. I mean, folk actually, literally, honestly, you know, agree with me. Every day, every minute is a struggle. struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. When you walk off this, <coughs> off this place of gathering, it's a struggle. Yeah. You've got to remind yourself, no, no, who I am. But this is, not a this is not a law. This is not a legalist thing. Again, people, uh, people made it a legalism, the denominations. But this is, this is the essence of who you are. This is what you are. That's why people ask me, why do you do something? I says, well, <clears throat> what do you get from that? Sometimes you ask people, why? People don't, know, don't want why, isn't it? Like, what? What is schizophrenia? What is mental illness?